Hello and welcome to this OpenTX quick tip. Now this is a quick tip for a gentleman called Dural. Now Dural asked this question about changing the channel mapping depending on switch position. And that's a relatively quick and easy thing to do in OpenTX. Now, if you have never seen any of the other OpenTX mixed skill stuff on the channel, and you have either a free sky radio or a jumper radio or something else that runs OpenTX or one of its variants, then go and have a look in there. There hasn't been a single thing that somebody has asked me to try on OpenTX that I haven't managed to get it to do. But let's look at some of the principles here for Dural on this idea. So what we're going to do is we'll just create uh, a new uh, m model. We'll not particularly worry about everything. We'll just cancel it out. There we go. So here we have a pretty regular model and we have the input set, rudder, elevator, throttle and aileron. There's the standard four. And there are the mixes, which is just really mirroring it and sticking it on the outside. And this is one of those kind of weird things that uh, can confuse people a little bit why OpenTX has both. But by having both inputs and mixes rather than just one set of settings that connect a control to an output, it gives you an awful lot of flexibility. Now, if we do things in the mixes, uh, these are the channels that are presented on the receiver. So this uh, rudder would come out on channel one, elevator on channel two, etc., etc. Uh, if we wanted it so that at the flick of a switch, I could have my rudder go to a different position, then what we could do is if we double click on rudder, we could have it only activate when a switch was in a certain position. So we could say when the switch is at the top, have it there. And then let me just copy and paste it into there. And we'll double click it again. And when SA is in the middle position, have it there. Let's copy and let's paste it in there. And then when switch A is in the low position, have it in there. So if we just simulate this, there's all the different channels. There's my rudder moving around. If I put SA in its normal position, so there's rudder on channel one, as you'd expect. Let me just have it so it stays in position. There's rudder one. But as I move SA, and if you remember, we actually moved it onto two of the channels. So watch the channels here. It goes on channel five and channel six. So there's that control moving between those three positions. So it's that easy. You can just move things around. Now, the other really cool thing is that as well as the physical switches that you have on the radio, uh, these kind of things that you can actually flick, you can also have something called logical switches, and those will turn on or off depending on certain conditions in the radio. But you can use them in exactly the same way. So it could be that we wanted to have the rudder move position when the throttle got above a certain value. Now, I'm not going to go into logical switches too much in here. Go and have a look at the video on it. But when we say A is more than X, so when uh, the throttle is more than zero, which is halfway, uh, then A is more than X is going to turn on. So if we just simulate that for a second. So watch what happens with logical switch one, which is this thing up here. As I increase the throttle, it gets above zero, which is the middle position, then it turns on. Now we can use that in exactly the same way as we would with the physical switch. So let me just delete that one there. So we can say that when switch logical switch one is on, it goes into the top position. And in this one, we can say when logical switch isn't on, which is what the exclamation mark means, be in that position okay so it's still pretending like it's a switch on the radio but it's actually being driven by something else so now what happens if i put the rudder all the way over here whoop, there we are it's currently channel five but as i increase the throttle and it goes above zero it'll jump to position one see that so that's a logical switch doing that for me. So that's how easy it is. If you just want to do and move outputs around the switches, you can do it here in the mixes. Now, the other option, of course, is you could do it in the inputs. 
you have to be a little bit uh, careful with uh, changing lots and lots of things around in the input. Personally, I would always recommend changing and switching things around in here. And then that way, if you're moving something like the rudder between uh, channel one and channel five, like we are in here, then on this particular control, you could do things like you could add your expo and all of those pieces here. And all that stuff then is consistent, irrespective of where the rudder is actually output on the receiver. So, Dural, hopefully that helps. That's the basic principle. Building on that, you can have loads of things moving around. The trick with this is start simply, get one thing working, and then start to add other mixes on top, and you can end up with some really complicated, cool stuff. Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you like the video and like what I'm doing here, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing, you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too. If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists. So if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction To, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.